Welcome back to Byline. I'm Brian Lilly. It took 30 years, but the world of political correctness has finally set its sights on video games. The Gamergate controversy began earlier this year, and one of the big concerns, misogyny and war against women in video game culture. Jenny Barrage is a video game enthusiast. She joins us now from Vancouver. She's also behind basedgamer.com. We'll get into what that is in a, in a moment, Jenny, but let me ask you about Gamergate. You are a woman. You play video games. Uh, part of the controversy, my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that they didn't like the way women were portrayed, they didn't like the attitudes towards women, but you're saying, hold on, I'm a woman, I'm a gamer, there isn't a big problem here, is that correct? That is absolutely correct. Now, what a lot of media is trying to do is trying to create a smear campaign on the Gamergate movement. Now, Gamergate isn't about women hating or isn't about misogyny. Instead, Gamergate is about ethics in journalism, in games journalism specifically. Now, for so many years, gamers have been putting up with uh, breaches in ethics in games journalism. And I think now, um, as a whole movement, gamers have gotten together to fight against this corruption. Now, one of the uh, uh, scenarios that was told to me was that uh, certain websites that were considered, uh, um, they were reviewing games, but they were trying to inject politics into it, and there may have been questions surrounding their ethics and how they were doing that and how they were determining good games and bad games. Is that a, a fair way to do it? And then the, the gaming community kind of revolted and said, no, hold on a minute. Right. When it comes to game reviews, a lot of gamers like uh, objectivity and they like to know if a game is good or bad in the sense that um, it, it uh, stands for good gameplay or good storyline or good mechanics. You know, um, putting feminist ideologies in game reviews should not really happen. Yeah, I, you know, I, I look at it this way uh, when I go to look at movies and I'll, I'll look and I just want to know What's the movie about? Good points, bad points. And then I'll decide, is it for me? Or if I'm looking at it for my kids, is it for my kids? Now, I, I will tell you that there are certain video games like Grand Theft Auto, which has received a lot of criticism for how women are treated in it. I won't let my sons play that. But there's a lot of reasons I won't let them play Grand Theft Auto. And uh, feminist ideology might be down the list, well below violence and respect for police, private property authority, and so on. Right. It's very unfortunate uh, what's happening with GTA 5 right now. Um, I've heard of stories of Target banning GTA 5 simply because um, it's quote unquote misogynist. Um, but what gamers, uh, what these non gamers and what these uh, radical feminists don't understand is that GTA 5 is meant to be a morbid satire and it's also supposed to be rated M for mature, meaning that it's not meant for children. Yeah, so um, an adult can get that morbid satire that you're talking about, whereas my 14 year old or 10 year old boy may not, most likely right. would not. Well, th there's also the other issue that um, a lot of non-gamers don't understand that um, these morbid options in GTA 5 are optional. You don't really have to, um, you know, you know put a, a, a kind of conduct these immoral um, missions in GTA 5. If you simply want to uh, play the game morally, you have that choice. The, the big thing in my house, and uh, I've got two budding gaming enthusiasts in the house, as I said, a 14-year-old and 10-year-old boy, the girls. That's mm, great. They'll play a little bit, but they're, they're not as interested as the boys. Uh, I think that's fairly standard, interested, but not as much. The big issue in my house is, is violence and what they're exposed to, and, and is it age appropriate within this uh, movement that start you know, Gamergate is the pushback against it. Was there, there an attempt to say these games are too violent and we need to clean them up as well? Well, this is why the ESRB exists. Um, with the ESRB, uh, there is a rating system for what games are better suited for children. Now, um, you know, violence in video games has never been academically linked to violence in children and violence in adults. And this is a study that has been foregoing over and over mm -hmm. again because it seems like academics have to reassure uh, media and reassure 
uh, consumers that violence in video games is not connected to violence in adults and children. Well, you know, for us, it's more along the lines of with GTA 5, is the storyline appropriate for a 10 year old or is it for an older one? And that's, as you say, why the rating system's there. Uh, we've got a short bit of time. I want to give you a chance to, to plug Based Gamer. Uh, this is a website you're developing to aggregate reviews and, and you say be a, a bit more open and transparent, honest of what's going on. Right, so um, we've seen a lot of prominent gaming websites, including Metacritic, like uh, and including Kotaku and Gamma Sutra, not really be transparent and honest with uh, their their agendas and with their uh, collusion and their nepotism. Base Gamer is going to solve this issue. Now, um, I'm not sure if you know this, but a lot of gamers see Metacritic as being a very notorious uh, aggregator because we simply can't trust these uh, review aggregations. So you're and gonna bring in a, a solution? Tell people where they can go to, to find this. So this is basedgamer.com, and right now we are um, a, a coming soon website. But you, right. can, you can reserve your username on basedgamer.com. We also have an Indiegogo campaign, and we're doing quite well. All right, uh, Jenny, thanks so much. Jenny Barrage out of Vancouver, and basedgamer.com is where you can go. You want to join the conversation with hundreds of thousands of great Canadians, though? You can go to our Sun News Facebook page, facebook.com slash Network. More to come.